So I see you got a mini. How do you like it? Yeah, it's not bad. But, but the Mavic 2 Pro, you can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second, right? Actually, that's the Phantom 4 Pro. This mm -hmm. does uh, 4K up to 30 frames per second. What I like to do is shoot 2.7K mm -hmm. up to uh, 60 frames per second, then I slow it down in post. It has some amazing features like hyperlapse and asteroid mode. Well, yeah, maybe maybe I should upgrade. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, what about that uh, iPad? Can you use that with the uh, Mavic Mini? Yeah, you can use this iPad with any DJI drone. I use it all the time. All my DJI mm -hmm. drones, I use it. Once, I, once you start using it, you're not going to want to go back. But uh, how about that case? That looks pretty cool. It's really small. Yeah, actually you can fit uh, three batteries in here. And then I got this uh, charging hub, extra propellers. Like basically everything you need in this thing. And it's uh, pretty small. It's pretty crazy how they uh, figure out a way to make it so small and so good. The only thing I don't really like is that it uh, isn't so good in, in wind. Like really windy days, it kind of goes everywhere. I kind of get nervous, so I don't really fly in windy days and the distance isn't so good. So that's why I think I need something AkiSync with uh, AkiSync, like the uh, Mavic 2 Pro. Yeah, actually you can fly this really far. It's got AkiSync uh, 2.0, so it goes, they say up to eight kilometers, but you're never gonna fly that far, but flies really, really far and always have, yeah. you know, no problems with signal okay. breaking up. It's really amazing. But the really uh, point. Mavic Air 2 mm. also has AkiSync mm. 2.0, so that flies really far as well. Oh. The Mavic 2. Yeah, the hmm. Mavic Air 2 seems... What do you think about it? Yeah, the Mavic Air 2 has all this new technology and features. Just came out. And it's only $799. So, thinking maybe it could be even an upgrade from this. I don't know. I think we got to talk to uh, one of those drone YouTube experts. We should watch one of their uh, videos. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. All right, guys, I realized that was kind of a ridiculous intro. I guess that's what happens when you're uh, by yourself quarantined. So today I am gonna compare the DJI Mavic Mini with the new DJI Mavic Air 2 and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I wanna compare all three of those because there are other DJI drones, but these three drones we're gonna compare today are DJI's best portable drones. And before we start, my name is Brett Garamella. If you haven't done so, don't forget to press that subscribe button and the bell notification. So just to let you know before we get into it, I put links to all the gear that I used in this video in the description below. Now I made a chart comparing these three dr drones with the most important features and specifications that I think is gonna be really helpful for you. So we're gonna go through that chart today. I know it's a lot to take in and it really is a DJI drone dilemma that we have ourselves now that the Mavic Air 2 is here. So my Mavic Air 2 is coming in a couple weeks. I don't have it yet, but I've flown the Mavic Mini, the Mavic 2 Pro, and I've watched a ton of videos. And I've been scouring the web for new info on the Mavic Air 2. So I'm gonna give you my take of that in today's video. So if we look at this chart, what we can see first starting with the price. Basically, two Mavic Minis equal one Mavic Air 2, and then two Mavic Air 2s equal one Mavic 2 Pro. Or if you wanted to look at it, you can say four Mavic Minis equal one Mavic 2 Pro. Now it's a really tough decision because these are all relatively new drones, although the Mavic 2 Pro is two years old, whereas the Mavic Mini is only about five, six months old, and then the Mavic Air 2 is brand new. So the technology is all relatively new, although the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 have the newer technology, but the Mavic 2 Pro is the most expensive drone, has the bigger sensor, so you might think that it's the best one. So really for price, don't let that throw you off. I think the Mavic Air 2 is gonna be more than double the value of the Mavic Mini. So if I had to choose between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2, I would probably go with the Mavic Air 2. The reason is you can't really fly the Mavic Mini in windy conditions, where it gets too windy, whereas the Mavic Air 2 is pretty similar to the Mavic 2 Pro in the wind. And also you get tremendous range. So the Mavic Mini, I found myself, sometimes it breaks up, or I really have to keep it relatively close. It has decent range for such a small drone, but it doesn't have AkiSync. And the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro both have AkiSync, which is gonna be a huge help 
or flying it really far. But let's get into the image quality because I am actually really surprised at how good the Mavic Mini is with, with the image quality. For such a small drone, I'm really shocked. Now we can see all these specifications side by side, but from someone who's flown drones for several years now and has a lot of experience, I can tell you that the Mavic 2 Pro does something a little better and the Phantom 4 Pro as well, that the consumer drones like the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2, which I've seen online, the photos and video of it, don't do. And what that is, is the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2, it does some over sharpening. So DJI has this algorithm for how it processes the image. And both for photos and video, the Mavic Mini to me, to my eye, looks a little too processed. It seems too much artifacting, more and just a little too over sharpening. Now a lot of people misinterpret resolution versus sharpness. So because the Mavic Mini has such a small sensor, as you can see in this chart, that the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 have smaller sensors than the Mavic 2 Pro, no matter how many megapixels you put on the sensor, if the sensor is bigger, it's gonna have a better quality of image. So you can look at it as just the amount of information. If you have a small picture versus a really big picture, the big picture has more information on it. So with the bigger sensor, you can blow the image up and it's not gonna degrade the quality no matter how many megapixels it is. Because once you get over about 20 megapixels, you know, you really just pixel peep in there. So long story short, the size of the sensor is more important than megapixels and the in-camera sharpening can sometimes, in my opinion, degrade the image. Now, if you wanna take your drone skills to the next level and be a professional filmmaker, I see the Mavic 2 Pro as really a professional tool. Whereas the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini, while you can get some great footage and you can start a professional career, it doesn't have the quality that the Mavic 2 Pro has. The Mavic 2 Pro, you can leave it out of the box and it doesn't over sharpen the image. It looks great, it looks natural, has a natural feel. Whereas the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 feel a little too over sharpened. And then in post-production, you can't really do too much with an image that is over sharpened. Now with that said, DJI did something very smart. They took those 48 megapixels of the Mavic Air 2 and they did something called pixel binning where they take four of each pixel and they put them all together. So now you're down to 12 megapixels and those 12 megapixels, just think of it as like a bigger pixel rather than a smaller one. Those bigger pixels can get more information. So that 12 megapixels is actually gonna be better in low light conditions. And the 48 megapixels will still give you that great resolution, but only like during the day and when there's a lot of light. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with the Mavic Air 2, which I think was a good decision by DJI. And this is the new technology that's not in any other DJI drone. Now onto the video side, the Mavic Air 2 is gonna be better than the Mavic Mini because it shoots with the option of H.265. So you're gonna have a better quality image, but it's also harder to edit. So if you put a H.265 file into your computer, it's gonna be harder to edit because you're gonna need a lot of processing power. Now another advantage the Mavic Air 2 has is shooting in D-Cine-like mode, which neither of these two drones do. I think that's a huge advantage because I love D-Cine-like. It's kind of the best of both worlds. I feel like the log mode or shooting with a flat profile is a little too flat, whereas D-Cine-like really looks good. And I've always found that DJI just does a really good job with that. And you can tweak it a little in post-production, but you don't really have to, it just looks great. So in terms of color profile, adding the D-Cine-like mode is a, is a welcome thing. And I think that puts a big advantage over the Mavic Mini, which doesn't shoot with D-Cine-like mode. And the last factor is the bit rate. Having a bit rate is being able to transfer more data all at once. So transferring 120 megabits per second, which the Mavic Air 2 does, is gonna be better than both of these drones and much better than the Mavic Mini. So you can expect better image quality from the Mavic Air 2. But I've said this in past videos, a lot of megapixels is great for photography, but it's not great for video. Those 48 megapixels, I don't know how that's gonna affect the video, how that's gonna look with this half inch sensor, but we'll have to see. So the jury's still out on that one because the Mavic Mini produces amazingly good quality video 
for such a small drone. Now, the Mavic Air 2 does have the advantage over both these drones in that it shoots better slow motion. So if you want slow motion, you're gonna wanna go with the Mavic Air 2, especially being able to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, and you can slow that down in post-production, and you can shoot 1080 all the way to 240 frames per second, although I probably wouldn't recommend shooting 1080. I would recommend with the Mavic Air 2 shooting at 4K 60 frames per second if you want slow motion, and then slowing it down in post. That's gonna be a lot better. Now the Mavic Mini, although you're gonna get great footage at 2.7K, shooting at 1080 at 60 frames per second isn't gonna be as good, especially with such a small sensor. So I said just shooting normal, the Mavic Mini is great, but for slow motion, you're really gonna want the Mavic Air 2. And what would really be interesting is to shoot 2.7K with the Mavic 2 Pro at 60 frames per second versus the 4K 60 frames per second with the Mavic Air 2. I'm gonna test that out in another video, but let's keep moving on. Now a huge advantage of the Mavic 2 Pro that I don't see talked a lot about online or on YouTube is the fact that you can change the aperture. So you can change it all the way from f2.8 all the way to f11. So being able to change that is a huge deal because I find at 2.8, the edges of the image are a little blurry. It's not quite has the best resolution and that sharpness that looks pleasing to your eye. Whereas when I use the Mavic 2 Pro, I usually shoot about f5.6 and f4 to f5.6, this drone just looks so good. Whereas the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2, you're stuck at f2.8. So you can't change it to f5.6. You're gonna need an ND filter if you fly during the day. And I think that's why DJI made the Mavic Air 2, the combo come with ND filters. So I'll put links to all these drones below. So if you get the Mavic Air 2, I highly recommend you get the combo. That's what I got because it comes with those ND filters and you're gonna need them because you can't change the aperture. And it's just the best value because it comes with extra batteries and other things as well. And the last thing with the camera is the fact that the Mavic Mini and and the Mavic Air 2 shoot at 24 millimeters, the focal length. I like 24 millimeters. I think that's really nice with the drone. It's nice and wide. Whereas the Mavic 2 Pro shoots at 28 millimeters, which I think is a little too cropped in. I wish it was a little wider. So I think you have the advantage with the focal length, the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2. So you're seeing the Mavic Air 2 check off a lot of boxes, which is why it's so popular right now. Now lastly, for photography, it's gonna be a tough call between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Air 2. They both shoot raw and the Mavic Air 2 shoots at 12 megapixels and 48 megapixels. It also has this new smart photo capture where it will capture the images for you. However, one thing to keep in mind is that the Mavic 2 Pro does have a bigger sensor, so it's probably still gonna be better for photography. With the Mavic Air 2, I wouldn't go above an 800 ISO. You could go to 1600, but it starts to get grainy as seen in this photo by The Verge. And for that reason, it's gonna be a really tough call. If you keep that ISO really low, the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro are both gonna produce tremendous photographs, much better than the Mavic Mini. For video, it's a, it's a much tougher call between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2, but for photography, I would definitely go with the Mavic Air 2. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the performance of the drone. And one thing I can say is the Mavic 2 Pro, I would say overall has a good camera, but it's an amazing drone. I would give it you know, an A plus for the drone and maybe like a B for the camera. So DJI still has work to improve with the camera, but the drone itself it is an amazing drone and for a good reason. It can fly really far. Maximum it says five miles, but you're never gonna fly that far anyway. So the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro, you're both gonna get tremendous distance. You're gonna be able to fly in similar amount of wind. Maybe the Mavic 2 Pro will handle slightly better in windy conditions, but it, you're really pulling hairs there. So the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro are both gonna be great in wind. Whereas the Mavic Mini, you can't really fly in windy conditions. It, DJI says above 18 miles per hour. You could fly above 18 miles per hour, but you're not gonna get that same smooth, steady footage. So to me, I would really go, if, if you're gonna fly on a daily basis and it's windy, where you're flying, I would definitely go with the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic Air 2. And if you're ever thinking about shooting professionally, you're gonna have to shoot on a windy day. So I would definitely go with those two drones and not the Mavic 
Mini. But they're all gonna give you solid flight time, so the time in the air isn't really gonna be a huge factor. The nice thing is the Mavic Mini, everything is cheaper, the batteries are cheaper, whereas the Mavic 2 Pro, the batteries are much more expensive. But that's why I always recommend getting the combo because it comes with extra batteries and all that for a cheaper price than if you bought it individually. Now we're gonna get into obstacle avoiding sensors and intelligent flight modes. So the Mavic Mini has no obstacle avoiding sensors, but the great thing about the Mavic Mini, you can put that propeller cage on or you can fly it in situations where it's kind of a tight squeeze between things and where there's a tight space and you don't have to worry about crashing the drone because it's so small and there's no obstacle avoiding sensors so it's not going to move out of the way so you can get some really unique shots that you won't be able to get with the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic 2 Pro plus it's a much cheaper drone so you could take more risks with it I wouldn't want to risk it with these drones because they're more expensive now the Mavic 2 Pro does have obstacle avoidance on all six sides but it doesn't use the side sensors in normal flying mode so it only uses all six sides when it's flying in active track or quick shots or tripod mode so for me it's great but is it a huge advantage over the Mavic Air 2 which has both front back and bottom sensors I would say slightly, but it's not a huge advantage. And if we look at the intelligent flight modes in terms of the drone being able to follow you, the Mavic Air 2 can follow you better because it's got the Active Track 3.0, but it doesn't have those side sensors that the Mavic 2 Pro. So you gotta be careful with the Mavic Air 2. It's gonna follow you better. However, there's still those sensors, it could crash, whereas the Mavic 2 Pro has sensors all around. Probably won't crash, but won't follow you as well. Now, a lot of people may be asking, can the Mavic Air 2 follow you as well as the Sky Dio? I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but I will say, looking at everything online, it seems the Sky Dio will follow you better, but the Sky Dio 2 has kind of a mind of its own. So what the Sky Dio 2 does is it follows you, but it goes around things and not necessarily the right direction that you wanna film. It kind of uses its own artificial intelligence to follow you. Now, it's not gonna crash, but it's gonna do all sorts of creative things that you may not want. Whereas DJI's follow me feature and, and it's active track I found is DJI pretty much goes straight behind you or goes kind of directly towards you. Whereas the Skydio kind of goes around you if there's a tree, sometimes it goes around, sometimes it goes this way, it kind of chooses. So the active track is a little different between the way DJI's artificial intelligence works and the way Skydio's artificial intelligence works. All right, so now if we look at these intelligent flight modes, it's really interesting because the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro seem to have a ton of intelligent flight modes that are great and the Mavic Mini just has the basic ones. So if you really wanna make use of those intelligent flight modes, I would really go with the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic Air 2. If we look at the bottom of this chart, we can see the apps. The Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 use the DJI Fly app has been updated. It's kind of abbreviated version or a slimmed down version of the DJI Go 4 app. I'm still not completely happy with it. I can't adjust my saturation, my contrast, my sharpness. And like I was saying, the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 have too much in-camera in sharpening. I'd like to lower that sharpness to at least negative one and then add it in post-production because when you add the contrast in post-production, it looks better than when it's added in camera. So that's one thing I like to see DJI do is to add that in the DJI Fly app. Also the screen, when you're trying to make all these manual adjustments, the settings go over the entire screen so you can't really see the screen. So you don't know what's really going on in the image. Whereas the DJI Go 4 app doesn't do that. So while we have all these intelligent flight modes with the Mavic, to Pro and the Mavic Air 2, I think the app overall is just gonna work better with the Mavic 2 Pro, at least right now. Hopefully DJI will give us some firmware updates and improve that. Now all these things are great. The thing I'm really looking forward to is the Hyperlapse 8K. For the intelligent flight modes, I think I gotta give the advantage to the Mavic Air 2 because it has the Active Track 3.0, has the Point of Interest 3.0. It's just newer technology. So with those new features and the new artificial intelligence, I think the Mavic Air 2 is gonna be great. So with that said, I think the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, because it has the obstacle avoiding sensors and because the Mavic Air 2 has a newer technology, if you put them together, I think it sort of cancels each other out for the intelligent flight modes. So it's really a tie for which drone has the best intelligent flight modes. I think you're gonna get great intelligent flight modes, whether you choose the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic 2 Pro. 
Of course, internal storage, the Mavic Mini doesn't have any. The Mavic Air 2 has eight gigs as well as the Mavic 2 Pro. But the biggest factor, the thing the Mavic Mini does have is it's so small and light, okay? So if you want the most portable drone, this thing is just insane how small it is. So the Mavic Air 2, isn't as small as the original Mavic Air. And that's because they put all those new features. They gave a better camera. They made it fly longer. So to me, if you're a beginner, you don't want to spend that much money. You want to get some great images, but if it's a windy day, you're fine with not flying your drone. Then go with the Mavic Mini, it's great. But if you want to fly your drone a lot, and you want to get some professional looking footage, you travel a lot, you want something that's small and compact to put in your bag, then I would definitely go with the Mavic Air 2. So if you had to choose between the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini, I would definitely go with the Mavic Air 2. Now, is it worth paying double the price for the Mavic 2 Pro? That's a tough call. If you're a professional filmmaker, you're gonna have a bigger dilemma, a bigger DJI drone dilemma, and it might go beyond DJI because Autel has the Evo 2, which is also an excellent drone, and there's some other excellent options out there. So to me, if you're a professional, yes, I would go with the Mavic 2 Pro, but you also might wanna consider the Evo 2, which doesn't have any geofencing. That's a big factor for some people. And it also shoots 8K, which you can really crop into. However, I just like the way DJI drones fly. To me, they just have a smoothness and the way of flying that really hasn't been matched with any other drone company yet. And really comparing the Mavic 2 Pro with the Evo 2, that's for another video I made over here. But in terms of DJI drones, it's a tough call. I think I would probably choose the Mavic Air 2 if I was just starting out right now, just because it has all the newer technology. It only costs $800 or you know, $1,000 for the combo. So I could use that extra money for extra gear and other things, maybe buy a couple batteries because you might need some more batteries or you could buy more ND filters or just more gear in general. Because we're in a difficult time now, I think the Mavic Air 2 makes more financial sense. And does the Mavic 2 Pro have double, double the value of the Mavic Air 2? I probably say no. I say the Mavic Air 2 is pretty close to the Mavic 2 Pro. If you fly professionally, if DJI updates the Fly app and allows us to lower that sharpening and adjust the contrast as well, I think the Mavic Air 2 is gonna be great, especially with those photo options, 12 megapixels versus 48 megapixels, and being able to shoot in D-Cine like, which I love, which the Mavic 2 Pro doesn't. So if I had to choose at the end of the day, I would go with the Mavic Air 2. But I spent all my money on all these drones, so I have three drones and <laughs> an empty wallet, but no dilemma. So it's up for you to decide. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think someone else would enjoy it as well, please share it with them. So don't forget to press the subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified of all the videos when I make them. So over the last couple of days, I've updated my drone gear guide. It has all my favorite recommended drones, all my favorite recommended accessories and software completely updated for May 2020. And when you get my drone gear guide, in addition to that, I will also be sending you this chart that I made with these three drones that we talked about today. So that's in the link below, or you could go to breckaramella.com backslash guide, and you can download that free guide and get more helpful tips and tutorials that I'll be sending you. That's it, I'm Breck Aramella, the Drone Pilot Pro, and remember, fly like a pro.